seems to me that what the elites have done, we'll come to who the elites are because people roll their eyes when you talk about elites in a moment, but what they've actually done, let's assume we, we know you'd know an elite if you fell over one, so to speak, um, they've hardened down in their position. That the, the plebs, if you like, the ordinary people, the deplorables, really are deplorable and shouldn't be listened to, rather than having the humility to say, uh, well, actually, it is a democracy and they do have a say and they should be respected for it. Do you I, I think suspect, I, as I watch it as a former political figure, that, that in many ways they're making the absolute worst mistake. They're hardening in their position against ordinary people. And I think the evidence shows that quite clearly, John. Look, if you look at what's happened since the rise of Donald Trump and the vote for Brexit, those two seismic moments in 2016, what we see very clearly in the evidence, the Americans would refer to it as the great awakening. Um, I would refer to it as the elites and the masses drifting further apart. Uh, but the evidence is clear. Many of the people who dominate the institutions, um, who are often you know, elite graduates, who are not just socially liberal, but have embraced radical uh, woke progressivism, uh, they've been drifting sharply to the cultural left on questions to do with culture, identity, and belonging. Uh, this is an empirical fact. We can see it very clearly in the data. And as they move left, as they've embraced things like you know support for immigration, um, believing that rights for minorities haven't gone uh, far enough, uh, believing that we cannot move on as a society unless we revisit what they see as historic injustices that happened 200 or 300 years ago, uh, in their views of wanting to prioritize social justice over things like free speech, um, that they've been moving further away from the average voter. And we see this in politics too. In Britain, um, both Conservative and Labour MPs are closer together on these cultural issues. Uh, than they are um, close to the average voter. They've, they've, they've moved sharply to the cultural left. And so that's really exacerbated the problems in Western societies because many voters rightly are now looking at the corridors of power and they're not really seeing leaders who are reflecting their views on issues um, to do with sex and gender, to do with uh, migration and borders, uh, to do with um, our relationship with supranational institutions like the European Union uh, to do with how we think about our history and our culture. And so um, the only way I think we can really move forward constructively is by uh, trying to close this void uh, between voters uh, and, and rulers. And as you say, John, so far we've seen very little evidence that, that they're willing to do that. And unless they do, as we've discovered and we're still discovering around much of Europe at the moment, unless they do meet voters on these existential questions like solving the illegal migration crisis, which is engulfing Italy as we speak uh, today in, in September 2023, unless they meet voters' concerns over Islamist terrorism, over uh, the rise of, of a, an anti-Western woke uh, a worldview, uh, then they will, they will come under growing political pressure from new insurgents, from new parties, from new social movements. So I, I don't think this is beyond dispute. When my book came out, many people in the new elite were very critical. Uh, they hadn't had the mirror held up to them in this way, but their reaction spoke volumes because the reaction was very dismissive. It was very derogatory. It was very, uh, it was very uh, elitist. Um, and for another half of the country, the book connected very strongly because they live their lives watching uh, the, this new elite and having to live with the consequences of their decisions, of their luxury beliefs, of their embrace of things that they're never going to feel the direct con consequences of, like mass migration, like the erosion of, of family, uh, like the like the uh, rise of uh, gender identity theory and so on. So I, I, I think you're right. They have doubled down. Um, they've entrenched uh, their power. They still dominate the institutions. And that is why I am absolutely convinced we will have more political turbulence in the years ahead.